Oh my god, look at all of these settings. Was this add-on made by aliens? Well, no, this is actually Plater, which is arguably the most important add-on for Mythic Plus. But unfortunately, it has one huge problem. Trying to set it up from scratch is like learning a new language. If you don't change the right settings, dungeons become way harder. But today, that changes. We will show you that with a few easy steps, you can customize Plater into the most broken add-on ever for Mythic Plus, allowing you to know priority targets, track important debuffs, gauge threat levels, assign interrupts, avoid frontals, and much more. So if you don't have Plater already, download the add-on, then log in and park yourself next to some target dummies, or even visit your nearest dungeon as we show you how to configure this add-on to be stupidly OP. And if you're new here and you want to see more content just like this, be sure to subscribe and drop a comment below on what guides you'd like to see us make next. Anyway, let's get started. Once you have Plater installed, we're going to need to change some basic settings. On the left column under Interface Options, be sure to disable Personal Health and Mana Bars since many class-specific weak auras already perform this role. You can also disable friendly nameplates, but this is mostly a matter of preference. If you want to use Plater to track friendly player names, then be sure to check this box to hide Blizzard health bars. Now, for the important part, below friendly nameplates, you will see an option to enable stacking nameplates, which we will want to check. Normally, nameplates overlap, which makes it harder to toggle between mobs, especially on the bigger trash pulls. But with stacking nameplates, you can easily tab from mob to mob and see other vital information. Even though your nameplates are now taking up more vertical space, it is easier to see important information at a glance. From this point, we can adjust the nameplate overlap. We would generally recommend anywhere from 1.1 to 1.4 since this gives us enough spacing to easily distinguish health bars and auras from different mobs. Finally, on the right side of the window, you can disable most indicators, leaving only rare and quest icons. Playing with elite icons in Mythic Plus is a bit redundant since almost every mob is elite anyway. You could also add execute range if you play warrior, priest, or monk, but any of these additional markers are optional, so feel free to add more or less if desired. This will automatically adjust on a class-by-class -class basis. The remaining settings on the general tab don't really need to change, but feel free to customize any cosmetic options later on after we've set everything up. The next settings we will change will allow you to filter debuffs, so you can prioritize the ones that actually matter. Plater will display multiple active debuffs on enemy nameplates. While some of these debuffs are relevant for other players, we want to only track the auras that are most important for you. By doing this, we avoid cluttering our UI and in turn have a higher chance at dealing maximum damage. To filter debuffs, we will go to the buff tracking tab. Here you will have the choice between automatic and manual. If you are simply looking to set up Plater quickly, then go to manual mode. Then we will go through every important debuff we care about, being highly selective and only adding our most important maintenance debuffs. For instance, as a balanced druid, we will want to track Moonfire and Sunfire, since maintaining these dots is vital for our damage output. Of course, there are other debuffs we will passively apply to enemy targets, like Waning Twilight or Astral Smolder. These are too minor to be tracking with nameplates, and if we add too many auras to our filter, our screen could easily become cluttered. The more maintenance debuffs we have, the more we will be required to track. Specs like Affliction Warlocks might need to track multiple debuffs, while Sub Rogues might only need to add one or two. If you are unsure of what to add, just think about what debuffs you care most about, which are typically the ones you want to have applied 100% of the time across multiple targets. Once we've added every debuff we care about, we will go to the Buff Settings tab where we will adjust the anchors of our debuffs. Technically, this step is optional, but in just a moment it will be obvious why we are changing our debuff location. Setting up automatic mode requires a lot more work, enabling and blacklisting various debuffs to only see the most relevant information. Regardless of what option we choose, let's adjust both the anchor and grow direction to left, and then adjust the X offset to be somewhere around negative 4 and the Y offset to be around 0. By doing this, our debuffs will now appear on the left side of each nameplate, making more use of the horizontal space of our monitor. The buff settings window can also be used to adjust any cosmetic options, but outside of the anchors we just adjusted, nothing else really needs to change here. Now we will go to the buff special tab, which we will use to track CC and other miscellaneous buffs. This is where we will be adding additional filters to show even more buffs and debuffs that are either applied by other party members or even buffs on enemy mobs. The first thing we will do is go to this section and check the following boxes to automatically track crowd control, enrage, and magic effects. No matter what, you should always enable these three. Additionally, we can track dispellable, but if we don't have a dispel effect, we could technically leave these unchecked. Just to be safe, keep them enabled so that we always see relevant information. 
For some reason, Plater doesn't automatically track a few debuffs by default. So, in the Add Special Aura window, we will have to add the following spell IDs to track Landslide, Sleepwalk, Turn Evil, Mind Soothe, and Enrage. Then, let's adjust our anchors once again. This time, we will set the anchor to top, and then adjust the X and Y offsets to zero, which can be changed if desired. Now, let's test to see how we're doing. We will apply our dots to the target, and then use a CC. If everything is right, our nameplates will have divided both sets of debuffs, with our dots on the left and our CC on the top. There is one additional modification we can make, but this is entirely optional. Instead of having debuffs only appear when they are applied, you can instead have them appear desaturated when not on the target. This is most useful if you are learning a new spec for the first time, since sometimes you will need reminders on what debuffs should be applied. To do this, go to the Ghost Auras tab, and then add your maintenance debuffs here. And then, adjust the alpha as needed, ideally keeping it between 0.3 and 0.5 for visual clarity. Before we cover some of the more technical aspects of Plater, let's quickly cover some optional but useful cosmetic settings. First up, in the Target tab, we can adjust some settings to make it clear who we are targeting. The first setting we will adjust is the Target Overlay Alpha, which we recommend keeping at 0.5. Then let's make sure Target Highlight is enabled, and then select whatever texture you like the most. And then adjust the highlight alpha anywhere from 0.5 to 1, and then the target highlight size anywhere from 5 to 10. If your highlight alpha is high enough, you don't really need to play with the target bracket indicator, but you definitely could if desired. If you do, just be aware that some of these indicators will overlap with our debuffs, raid markers, and cooldown timers. Speaking of which, let's change our raid marker settings, which by default is anchored on the left and will overlap with our debuffs. We will simply change the anchor to the inner right, reduce the scale to 0.7, and then adjust the X offset to around negative 15 to negative 7, and then we can disable the extra raid mark. Now to test, let's mark a dummy, apply our dots, and use a CC. If everything is right, our nameplate should look very clean, with our dots on the left, CC on the top, and raid marker on the right. If you play a caster DPS, you might want to enable target always on the screen, so you know where to adjust your camera to see mobs out of the viewing window. The remaining settings can be adjusted as desired. We highly recommend having a different texture for your focus target, especially for mob control. Next up, let's go to the enemy NPC tab. Here, the world is your oyster, and you can customize the dimensions of nameplates and other settings if you want, though we don't really recommend changing much outside of nameplate dimensions. If you plan to PvP, you can do the same in the enemy player tab, and if you want to track friendly nameplates, you can do the same here. If you've made it this far, congratulations, you are halfway there. Now we have to talk about mechanics. This section is where we will give Plater its true power, so be sure to pay attention closely. In the Advanced tab under General Settings, you can set the update interval higher if you value more performance, since this will decrease the load on your memory during intense pulls. Right below that, be sure to enable health bars on non-attackable units. This will allow you to see nameplates on incorporeal ghosts, which would otherwise be hidden by default. Then on the enemy box selection space, you can modify the width and height, which will change the invisible boundary for clicking on individual nameplates. Avoid going too big since that will decrease precision when clicking. The next two tabs we will be looking at include scripting and modding. Plater has multiple built-in scripts. If you are an advanced player, you can get away with disabling most, if not all of these, assuming you already know every dangerous mechanic in every dungeon. Otherwise, you should at the very least enable Big Alert, Frontal Cone, Very Important, and Ultra Important Casts. Here we have Very Important Casts in green on the left, orange colored ultra important casts in the center, and then frontals on the right which have a very subtle arrow animation. As you can see, depending on the category of cast, there will be a slight variation in the health bar. There are also scripts for fixate mechanics that once again change the appearance of the nameplates to easily telegraph these mechanics, but many weak auras packages already include fixate alerts, so this can be redundant. Next up, the modding tab is where we will be adding some useful scripts. First up, we will want to add abbreviated names, which we can find with a quick search on Wago. From there, just copy the import string, and go back into WoW, press import mod, and then paste the string into the window. This will simply make the names of mobs appear shorter on your nameplates, which helps minimize additional clutter, and if you are on voice, will make it easier to call out individual mobs by name. The next script that we will want to add is force threat color, which we will also find on Wago. Copying the important string, and pasting it back into WoW. 
This mod will override nameplate colors based on threat, and you can modify these colors in the colors and threat tab. For instance, if you are a DPS or a healer and have aggro on a mob, then the nameplate will turn red. If you are a tank and do not have aggro on a mob while in group combat, then its nameplate will turn red, otherwise the nameplates will be their default color. Speaking of which, now let's make our last final adjustment in the NPC colors and names tab. Here you will find a massive list of every mob you have encountered in Mythic Dungeons, and by using the select color column, we can change the color of each nameplate. If you've watched high level mythic streamers, you might have already noticed this, but every mob is color coordinated. Mobs with important interruptible spells get one color, and high HP or other dangerous mobs get another. If anything does not fit neatly into either of these categories, then it gets something else. This allows groups to know vital information about trash packs before they are pulled. If you see a mob with the dangerous interrupt color coding, then you know it's going to be a priority target for control. And even if you don't know exactly what route you will take, you can make some guesses on which packs are most efficient or if a pack is very risky. If you have incredible game knowledge, you can go one by one through this list and color code mobs. But if not, we've done the work for you with an import string below, which includes all of the settings we've covered today. You can even color code mobs during dungeons by having plater options open on the NPC colors tab, and then using the drop down menu to change individual NPCs. And as an additional part of this plater profile, we will also include a link below to a weak aura called Spell CDs on Nameplate. This add-on will automatically tell you the cooldown of NPC casted spells. So if you see a mob that has a dangerous cast, you can track its cooldown more precisely to know when a kick is needed. Now, we should admit that Plater, along with weak auras, are highly personal. So even if you don't like the settings we've included in our package, you are absolutely free to customize anything we've made for you. We even recommend browsing Wago to check out class-specific scripts that you can import directly into Plater. By now though, it should be clear that add-ons can be a massive lifesaver in Mythic Plus, and when set up properly, it feels like you're using cheat codes. We plan on making a complete UI guide in the future, but for now, let us know in the comments below which add-ons you would like help setting up for M+. And while you're doing that, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications to get an alert anytime we upload a video. For now though, we want to thank you all for watching, see you soon.